When we were developing the design of the fairing, there were two things that we were trying to accomplish. One was make the motorcycle aerodynamically slippery for top speed, but in addition to that, we really wanted to make it so that it created a comfortable environment for the rider. And there were two things that we were trying to accomplish. One is, is that when in, when in a full tuck, we wanted the air to be going over the top of the rider's helmet rather than hitting the forehead and causing a lot of turbulence for the rider's head. So the air, when you're in a tuck, is just kissing the top of your helmet. Secondly, we've got a couple nice benefits around the hand pocket area. The air is going around your arms, your hands and your arms, which is a much smoother flow than having to bounce off of and deal with all the different surfaces of your hands and your arms. When it's raining outside, not only is the air going around your body, but the rain is as well. But even when it's not raining, on a cold day, it's pushing the cold air around your body. Your hands are in nice still air, and it keeps your hands warmer while riding. This is the engine our customers have been asking for. It's 1125 Cs, has a huge amount of power, a very broad power band that goes from 3,500 RPM all the way up to the 10,500 RPM red line, and a very linear torque curve. When we talk about usable power, what we're really referring to is that at any RPM, when the rider decides they need more horsepower and rolls into the throttle, the power is there. So we've designed the bore and stroke of the engine, done the calibration work, designed the throttle body system, and really laid the engine out so that no matter what RPM you're at, when, while you're in the corner, as soon as you decide you need to roll on and start accelerating, that the power is there and is there in a very predictable way. To jump on the bike in street term and to go out there as good as I did, it felt great. New forks on it are pretty incredible too. Get a lot more feedback through the front end and the chassis. You can dial in the bike even better. The improvements they've made are awesome and the bike has a lot more feel on the front end. You can tell what the front wheel's doing under braking and trail braking when you're coming in and plus just the feel of how much the front is pushing. So I think it's definitely a big step forward. Well, fresh impression is really good, very light handling. That's a big thing, very light handling because it's a tight twisted track bike wants to hit the spot, it wants to change directions. It's a fun bike to ride, it's an easy bike to ride, um, and deceptively quick. I nail it at 3,000 RPMs and I mean it pulls steady all the way up through until it gets to red line. It's never got a spot to where it just comes in real hard, so it doesn't feel as fast as it actually is because of that. It makes it easier to ride, it, may, it makes the horsepower user friendly. But if you catch your gear too high and you still just backshift once as opposed to twice, it's still will pull you all the way through the corner. The motorcycles that have got nice amounts of torque and a nice delivery of torque are the ones that they are easy to ride. I can't really get over how good those tires are too for a street tires. Street tire. They work good. I just like how the fun band's gone from this big to like that big now. <laughs> you know, where the Japanese is like that. You know, what's nice about that is that you can take a production bike, stick it straight on the circuit and have fun on it. It's going to put them on a new level, for sure. It's going to put them into a new uh, class to compete in. and. Um, really happy to see him going in this direction, so pretty stoked about it. Our focus is always as to what the rider is going to experience. I mean, the, it's all about the rider. Eric once said to me, the perfect motorcycle would be tires and the rider. I mean, it wouldn't be any machine, really. It would just be the rider and the road.
We need to develop the suspension. We need to develop the tires. We need to develop the chassis. We need to make sure that this thing is giving the proficient rider what he's looking for, that field that is going to make this bike succeed in the marketplace. We could simply say that we just, you know, we send the bikes down to Arizona where our test facility is and that they're going to, you know, beat the crap out of these bikes and that that's all we care about. But that's not all we care about. We care about the experience of the rider. Throughout the project, we've contracted with professional riders that have accompanied us on tire testing, on suspension testing, on tuning, that have told us if we're going in the right direction or if we're not, where we need to make adjustments. So all the feedback that we've received from professional riders is that it just works great, that that distribution is just right, and that intuitiveness that we were after is just there. By the time that we deliver the product, we've had all those opinions that have been forming the final product so that we're very confident in what we're delivering.